Hi, and welcome back to Guess Who's Bad in Bed, the show where we guess who's bad in bed. And for the 1100th time, it's not me. For God's sake, it's not me. Yeah, that's right. Um, I was watching 90 Day Fiance, The Last Resort, because I hate myself. It turns out Liz, with all malice, said that Big Ed is horrible in bed. You know what? That should be the name of a book. Big Ed, Bad in Bed, the no next story. Started off with them saying they're the strongest couple and then they proceed to devolve into probably the worst one. I didn't actually expect anything worse than I thought this was exactly what was gonna happen. And yeah, when I was watching the show today, I just couldn't stop watching every contestant because this episode in particular is hilarious. It's about a sex ed teacher who comes to school, some grown adults. So when I say grown, I don't mean 20, 30, I mean like 50, 60. This is the point where hopefully by now you would have learned these lessons. This is like going to grade school when you're 70 and I'm not saying it's a bad thing. You're never too uh, old to learn except when your hip might be broken when you thrust it too hard. So we're gonna take a look at this today and if your partner has ever said you're bad in bed my heart goes out to you. Find better. And by the way if you haven't subscribed you're probably bad in bed and um, if you don't follow me on Instagram at 16 Leo you're even worse. If you haven't watched the series, by the way, basically Big Ed, Liz, and a lot of these other couples go on to the show called The Last Resort, in which their relationship has broken down to, like, its last straw. And in order to fix the relationship, they go on a resort where they proceed to drink a lot. And they have three therapists who I'm pretty sure are paid actors because none of them seem to have any actual advice. And this show just leads me to believe TLC literally just wanted to give really disastrous couples ammo to become more toxic by getting them inebriated, which I think is borderline predatory. But anyway. I never get tired of this. Let's watch. Stick your tongue out. Uh, what the hell is even that? The episode starts off with that guy, Azuela, teaching his kid how to brush his teeth. And he does the most inappropriate thing I've ever seen since The weekend made the idol. <laughs> Stick your tongue out. Daddy, chill. Uh, you don't do that to kid, let alone a kiss concert. I mean, this is just, yeah. So I added this edit throughout the video. Hope you spot them. Meanwhile, uh, Big Ed and Luz have had this fight. They were in the jacuzzi. Big Ed was fighting Kelly, who's the dude with a tooth gap in the upper and bottom part of his teeth. He's like Morpheus from the Matrix on both sides of the mouth. Besides that, Angela was standing up for Big Ed because they're the same age, even though she looks like she's 157. And Luz didn't like it. Now everyone's fighting. Caught up. All right. You ready? No. That's a good color on you, baby. The lady is a little bit mad. And uh, she's not looking to reciprocate any of that energy, but Big Ed does, you know, the nice thing. He's like, that is a nice color on you. White skin looks good on you. This is a very good compliment, Big Ed. You've certainly, you've got that communication skill down whenever you and your partner are not talking. <laughs> That's communication. No. That's a good color on you, baby. Ooh, that's a bad color on you, Big Ed. I'm peeping those Crocs. You can't be wearing those out in public. Those need to be burned in a private area. Oh my God. You know, oh Jesus, what the hell? No wonder she's mad at you. I would be too if you wore bright green Crocs. Jeez. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. How are you? Crocs and a black singlet that shows your 12 month Pregnancy is just not a great look, okay? That paired with a tattoo of your face on your leg and you've got yourself a disaster of a human being. That's excluding the neck, which is excluded from his body anyway. I'm just saying. It's much. But anyway, Big Ed and Liz are shown leaving. Then they meet up at a group thing. And this turns out to be the sex ed course that they're running today because they think that these couples may not be intimate enough and intimacy often helps a relationship, which I truly believe so. Pick a table. Come join us. How about this one? No, this one. After last night... You can see that this couple is as far apart as can be. Big Ed picks the table on the left, and Liz is like, nope, I like the right one. And she goes to the far right, leaving Big Ed to literally have to turn his body and wander to, towards her. At the start, by the way, and this might be karma, they again call themselves the strongest couple, and a different couple, Kelly and his partner, I don't know what her name is, Macy Gray. Kelly and his partner were sitting as far away from each other as possible. Now, 
It's Big Ed and Liz who want to sit far away. But Big Ed does follow her to another table. And the therapist who watches this does absolutely nothing because she's useless. We got in another argument this morning and I'm just pissed. If we don't learn how to fight, we don't have a chance of walking out of this. Do you still think you have a chance, Liz? Do you? Liz is like that person who keeps buying the lottery and now she's like at 80 years old and she's like, I'll get it one day. It's like, you know, you've been buying it for 60 years, lady. I feel like at some point you have to take the signs that the Lord doesn't give it, you know? You keep saying stuff like, if we don't get it right, we might lose this relationship. It's like a delusional coach and the game is like, already over and he's like come on guys we gotta rally together and they're like man i'm leaving now my mom just came to pick me up we lost by 300 points that's not even real in soccer my point is sorry that she's just giving so many chances to a relationship that seems doomed it's almost like she's finding excuses to try and keep the relationship going and it's like you don't need an excuse like this is if every other day you're fighting if the cons outweigh the pros if it's not good for your mental health, if in the long run you feel like it's not gonna go anywhere, maybe you should save yourself the trouble. I, I'm all for seeing where things go. I believe in that. But Liz, every time something dire happens, she's like, one more chance, Spigot, and it's over. And she's been saying that for a long time. What? Hi, hey guys. Hi, Kelly. Just then, Kelly and his partner walks in, and I don't know why they beeped out the thing, but it sounds like Azuelo is saying, Hi, Hi, Kelly. I was feeling optimistic with Molly and I, but then it came crumbling down. I don't see any progression on this. Now Ed is in here. I just, I just need a break. Just big Ed existing annoys Kelly, who is a Brooklyn cop. When you decide to be a cop on, you could have been anything. And I keep saying this, if Brooklyn cop looks like this, no wonder Brooklyn is in the state that it's in. My goodness. Brother, the Brooklyn Bridge is gonna crumble if like two cops walk on it. This is not fair. He has to be the center of attention constantly. In the beginning, I felt bad for Liz, but I don't because she keeps running to him, so that's on her. Then Kelly drops a nugget of truth by saying, Liz actually isn't someone that we should like feel sorry for. And initially, I feel like we all were like, oh God, Big Ed is just, as usual, sucking up all of these women somehow into his life. But then at this point, it's like Liz willingly does this. She willingly swims back upstream like a salmon to her man. That's what fish do. It's like Big Ed is the bear and she keeps swimming and then jumping into his mouth. Not like that, but you know what I mean? How sorry can we feel for you at this point? Like, I still feel sorry when she cries, but at this point it's like, you know this is gonna happen. Like if someone was to put their hands on a fence and it said, it will electrocute you, the first time you'd be like, oh man, dude, you're an idiot, but what? But by the 10th time you're like, Jimmy, your hands, Smell like popcorn. Why do you do this to yourself? It's just you keep coming back and I don't think it's a good idea. Angela's not coming today. She and Michael actually have their own session because he's not here physically. Why is she speaking to them like they're like brain dead? Angela isn't here today because Michael isn't physically here. So they're gonna do their own thing and you guys are gonna sit here. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm dying. You guys got more of that crack. Thank you, uh, lady. Three therapists on this island and they need a fourth person. They need guest speakers. They need features on their album just to get people to like pass the time. Horrible, horrible therapists. We have a guest today. This is Reba. Hi, Reba. Hello, Reba. Hello. So then they introduce Reba, who is the sex ed speaker. And she's just trying to have a conversation about how she can get everyone to jack off on to another partner for love, jizzing for love, Jov. I have a question. What's your question? Then Big Ed drops the greatest joke of all time, because Big Ed is a comedian, of course. Where do babies come from? Hey, hey, funny guy, I got a joke for you. What smells rotten and puts people to sleep? A circumcision. No! Uh. <laughs> 
I thought that was funny. I mean, who sits down with their kids and is like, what? You don't know how to brush your teeth to me? How about this? <laughs> That's what I did to your mom last night to me. What the hell is that about? Who even, what even is that? Oh my god, ugh. I would never let my kids around this guy. I don't even have kids, but ugh. We're gonna learn a lot about that today, I promise you. I promise you. That was not as funny as you think it is. Was it funny even? Jovi, I feel like you're even giving him credit. That was not as funny as... <laughs> no, it was, it was. But, but not as funny as... <laughs> no, it was pretty funny. I am, like, not in the mood for jokes. Oh. At all. Where do babies come from? <laughs> Oh shit, Liz is not happy. She She's normally like, you know, if she's in a good mood, Big Ed will say something and she's like, <laughs> you dick. But she she is really unimpressed today. You do not want to set her off. <laughs> and I think she's about to implode and then explode in that, in that order because you know, Liz and her emotions are two different things. As soon as she gets angry, she lets everyone know about the situation. And I think you know where I'm going with this. In approximately, I would say five minutes, she's about to let everyone know the inadequacies of Big Ed and his underperforming sexual prowess. As if we didn't already know and see enough of this man. When you don't know how to please your partner and you don't know what you want, that can be a hindrance when it comes to the emotional intimacy that you experience. So I feel like most people can probably understand this now. But yeah, I think they go hand in hand. It's kind of hard to have a relationship that's one dimensional. Usually that's the difference between, oh, this is, this is good and this is the love of my life or this is my soulmate or whatever you believe is like all of the other facets line up because you might find like someone who emotionally gets you but physically not there or someone who's like physically like yeah but emotionally not there someone <laughs> who doesn't get your needs but does other things and i feel like things need to go hand in hand and even if you find all that you need to be able to plow them like the fields on a sunday and you are a farmer you need to do that if you're not plowing your wife <coughs> that's my new show if you don't plow her i'm going to I want you guys to know, like, nobody has to get up and do anything here. Like, we are not putting cucumbers in our mouths. We're not <laughs> oh, trying that out was the whole point of it. Yeah, so then Reba's like, hey, listen, this is not one of those Mulf Manor things where I get a bunch of fruit and then stick it in each other and it becomes suggestive. This is not like that TikTok thing where people watch cantaloupes uh, or other fruit being opened up and put into things and then they don't know how to feel. This is not that, okay? This is not Gordon Ramsay's <laughs> Master Chef. This is sex ed by me. And then Jovi's like, uh, I thought we were supposed to put cucumbers on his mouth. I mean, my mouth, because he's a comedian, because everybody here is the class clown. The real class clowns are the audience watching the show, but in the show, it's Jovi and Big Ed. Hey, Wait a minute, okay. what? We're not? Have you seen the size of Jovi's mouth? <laughs> he could fit that whole cucumber in there sideways. <laughs> So then Big Ed takes a shot at Jovi because even though at the very first episode they both apologized and said they're bigger men, which is funny for Big Ed to say, um, Big Ed was basically saying his mouth is so wide he could put a sideways cucumber slash dick in it. And I would say that's immature, but I did see the look on Jovi's face and he genuinely looked concerned. He was like, it's not that big. So I don't know whether to feel sorry for him or not. But Big Ed complaining about getting bullied about his neck and then proceeding to do this to everyone at any given juncture is the reason why I can't stop making these jokes at him. Every time I'm ever, he's like, man, people keep saying this about me or my body and it hurts. And then any chance he will get, he calls him another man a bitch. He openly disses this, that guy. He's just really a target for the stuff, man. I'm gonna pass these papers around. If there is a thing that makes you uncomfortable, a question that you wanna ask that's not in front of the group. Yeah, I got a question. Did you see about 10 seconds back when Big Ed tried to drink water and it slipped out? Like his mouth was on Novocaine and he can't even like swallow? This man is honestly, he reminds me of some sort of duck type bird thing where like if you fed it, and then put water in its mouth, it would just drip from the side. It's just, I can't believe I'm watching an almost 60 year old man need a bub. And you know, he's like fully able, I think. He, yeah, he is. You can write it on these papers, and then this bucket is where we're gonna put all of the questions or things we wanna share. So anyway, uh, Reba is like, yo, let's have an anonymous question asking session. Just put down some questions. I'm not gonna say who it was, Big Ed, but um, I'll just draw one from the pile. Small dick, Big Ed, not gonna say who it's from. Raise your hand if you got sex ed in school. Daddy, chill. Nobody talk about that. Sex is a shame. I don't know how schools are doing it these days. Back in my day, they did the classic dive board slash erection. One day, little Timmy went on a diving board 
and it wasn't flaccid, it was hard. And he didn't know what to do. So now he has a hard diving board in his pants. And then he has sex with people. And that's sex ed. I learned zero from that. The only thing I remember from school, this is, and this is true. One brave young soul, this lady, she put her hand up in front of the class. And there were like a hundred people. They were like, no question is too stupid. And she, like, she put her hand up and she was like, can you swallow jizz? Is that bad? Do you have a baby? I swear that's true. And then the teacher was like, you can swallow it and no, you will not have a baby. You'll be fine. And then she just put her hand down and I was like, that is the question. I'm so glad she asked. So I forgot your name from high school, from middle school, sorry. Thank you. What a question. I feel, I feel like there's a science subject, but I didn't take that subject. Oh no, it's not scientific. So I mean, it is, but I don't think you'll find this in... Uh... Oh, maybe he means biology is what he's talking about. He had to take biology to learn about sex ed. I think it's a good thing to learn. I think everybody needs to actually know. Especially on a subject that's a taboo or like something that not all cultures discuss in the same way. It's good to have the information and whatever you want to do with it is up to you. I have a, I have a question. Sure. So, so the lip of a circumcision, does that um, create stimulation for the woman? That's a great question, Ed, actually. Wow, Big Ed asks a real genuine question. This is probably the most surprising thing of the episode because uh, the first time he raises his hand, it was for the stupidest joke in the world. So this was uh, interesting. Let's see what she says. The answer is yes. yes. Do we have any circumcised folks in the house? Oh, oh, what, what is this shit? Do you need this information? Do we have any circumcised folks in the house? Oh, three? Huh? Oh, um, just, just asking for a friend, which is me. Why would you need to know exactly? Do we have any circumcised folks in the house? If I ever do stand-up comedy, this is what I like. That's, I gotta start with that. Just some personal questions. You guys have any or outies? I'm not talking about the belly button, man. You have a good circumcision story, tell it. When we got my d we go walk like this in the seawater and clap so the fish not come eat our d Good story, bro. It's a great story. They cut his dick off, and then he went into the water to clap. Tell how, how, what tell, age is that? Tell done? how old. Um, I don't remember. He was 15. What? I feel like this man just smokes tons of weed and then just exists. The more I know or learn about Azuelo, the less I feel confident about his kids growing up. This is a man who, at the start of the episode, stuck his tongue out <laughs> the same way he would to his wife on a great, great Thursday night out. And then proceeded to say they cut his dick off and then he clapped in the water. <laughs> he was 15. What? 15. <laughs> wow. But yeah, apparently he got circumcised at 15. And for any of you who don't know, if you're gonna get circumcised, don't do it that, that old. Like, I think they do it when you're young. I got new respect for him. At 15, I wasn't thinking about that. I was just, you know. Yeah, reading that comic books. Me too. At 15, I wasn't getting circumcised either. Oh, well, I wasn't doing anything at 15. You know, the sock. That's the only treatment I was doing at 15. What? Use the sock? Do people actually do that? Does any? Can anybody confirm? I know this is a personal question. I never use a sock. I didn't use a sock ever. Sorry, this is TMI already for like a sock. Just a hand, bro. <laughs> okay, so let's see what we have here. How to make my big how to make that's a serious question and i need help with it explain come on reba you said you were sex ed explain every guy needs to do it i've watched the films on incognito come on just give it to us me and big ed need to know i've seen big ed's blurred dick and it is one pixel you gotta help us to make myself laugh that's me. Oh, that's me. Some other people, they have bigger d Some other people have small d yeah, Why are you going in? So then uh, the next question is, how do I make myself last longer? And as well, just admits to it. And then in the process, he throws shots at Big Ed by saying, some people have a big ding dong. Some people got a small ding dong. Him. And I don't know what to say. We've got different problems. His problem is a small ding dong. Mine is uh, how to last with it. He thinks he's being all funny. But Reba comes back with probably the greatest philosophical reply I've ever seen. At least he's being honest. Look, here's the thing. <laughs> Maybe you should consider why you want a big Oh! What? Right? Because- Yeah, everybody in the class silent now, motherfucker. Have you ever asked yourself why you need such a big dick? Because, uh, last I checked, it's how you use it. Maybe she doesn't even want something that big. So, why don't you put your sword away, mister? 
you won't be needing to duel in a very long time. She just sunned everyone in that class. I gotta say, Reba is the only therapist slash whatever person here that I'm actually learning from. Very good. Not all people with vaginas want people with big yeah. That was the uh, fat lady. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Speak for yourself, bitch. <laughs> okay. Uh, don't even come to me with that space. <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> Take out a ruler. You need to. <laughs> I just wanted to know where the female's G spot was. Okay. I'm sorry. I know that we're gonna just pass right by, but what a what an insightful thing to say. Uh, I'm not gonna touch on it too much, but like I know guys just get insecure about that, and when you watch. Uh, so a lot of the times you get a distorted perception of both the male and female body and sometimes it leads you to think about like why don't I look like this, that, am I going to please someone the same way, will I be good enough? And, and a lot of these things are like insecurities that we put upon ourselves. So maybe it doesn't matter about the size. Um, maybe it is just if you find someone you really love, it'll be perfect for them. Stop the cap. <laughs> I'm just trying to like make this seem like it's a philosophical thing. I just wanted to know where the female's G spot was. It's actually just the backside of the clitoris. Did you find it? Like right now? No, he just asked the question. He asked, where's the G spot? And you said next to the F. And then she was like, did you find it? As if he was looking on a map. Did I find yeah. it? Yeah. I'm trying to find it. I, I don't know. <laughs> he don't know where mine is. I've, more and more, this feels like a South Park show. Like, every time I hear Molly speak, she sounds like a caricature of what the Southern woman would. He don't know where mine is. He don't know what a G-spot is to find, save his friggin' life. He just little, you know, critter. Put that critter in my vagina. You ain't gonna have a very good time now. Is you, Kelly? How to still be aroused when your partner has to take multiple breaks? Okay. Oh, okay, so this is the question. It's an anonymous question. How do you still get aroused when your partner needs to take break time? I gotta say, doing the doing the sticky icky, they say that it burns a lot of calories. <laughs> Believe it or not, you just don't have to sit there and lay down the whole time. At some point, you gotta do something. It takes some stamina, and maybe not everybody has that. I just said all of this to say that even though it was anonymous, it's 100% uh, Liz asking because Big Ed needs to take breaks and she is feeling unsatisfied because they cut to them immediately after. There is a really awesome way for people with penises to last a little longer. The prostate, it's between the- Okay, so this is actually turning into a serious conversation about how this is, how you can last longer. Wow, uh, more than I bargained for today, I gotta say, but okay. Finger into the anus. Some people, they get aroused. All people with prostates are hardwired to feel pleasure through the prostate. Why do people not like taking it up the butt then? Rebut seems to think it's the perfect way to go. I don't know why it's getting such negative press. Reba understands this shit. For her, let's do it. So there are two ways to potentially help your partner have a prostate orgasm. Now, why would you be interested in prostate orgasm? You wouldn't, and I'm not. And this is, oh God, what a hell, what a conversation this is. You know that time, when, right after a penis orgasms? You didn't have to cut me off. Like yeah, I know that time. Thank you. Thanks for asking like it was a memory. You know, remember that time? It was just, just woo, like a volcano. You remember? <laughs> Oh, good time. Weird way to phrase it, but all right, Rebo. Kind of goes limp like a shrimp and it doesn't yeah. come back up for a little bit. That's called a refractory period. With prostate orgasms, that refractory period is little to none. Okay, weird, weird thing to be like, little to none. So you can just, you know, in between the bun. Little to none in between the bun. Got it? It'll be hard for days. And it's like Viagra for your butthole. Oh. Uh, uh, sometimes I'm not prepared for this. Sometimes I go into this and things I hear are beyond my pay grade. You can go again and again and again and again without having to take a break. It's about time. I would love to know how that feels. Emotional, damn it! Oh, shit. There it is. There, that comes from absolutely nowhere. So, Reba's like, basically, basically what she's saying is, if you just stick a finger in the man's butt, he'll be able to nut for hours. Finger and butt equals nut. Woman can become a slut because she can get it any time and he will always have it up, so. What is he doing? He's beginning to believe. And then Liz basically throws Big Ed under the bus by saying, I wish I could have that. And now everybody is feeling awkward in this classroom. I would love to know how that feels. Find another partner. The first way is through the butt. Second way, this is the penis, right? And we've got the 
We'll make... I thought you said you weren't gonna do this with fruits. I eat those, okay? And now you're saying they're balls. You know how this will go down with the homies? I'll tell you, not as well as I thought, but it will be hilarious. The balls, okay? Balls? If I am holding the balls, and I can just put a little upward pressure, so that... Play with those nuts. Got it. Right. This didn't have to be a 20-minute conversation. Play with those nuts, he'll get out. That's great. Thanks for the information, Reba. I feel like you've certainly taught this classroom a lot, and uh, I feel kind of awkward watching this with, like, near 60-year-olds. But, yes. Thanks. Like, the first time that we dating, my was, like, needle hurt at the outside. If you are feeling soreness on your penis after sex, you need... Genital warts. Maybe because he went out and he cut his dick off and then he clapped in the ocean. I don't know. Did he clap it in the ocean? There's a lot of stuff down there. Do you want to be clapping cheeks down in the ocean? I wonder if people have ever banged in a submarine before. You heard about, like, the Mile High Club. What about the underwater sea sex co colony? Is that a thing? Questions for later. Anyway. Lubricant. Lubricant? Can you use your own sp Beat. Does he have a disability or something? Because, like, when I first heard him talk, I was like, oh. Now I'm hearing him talk and then put sentences to sentences to sentences to Does he have a disability or something? And then put sentences together? I'm like, oh. Sound like Forrest Gump, dumber cousin. She basically said lubricant. I don't know if he understands or if he's just so cheap that he's like, what are my alternatives to lubricant? I know that costs money and I don't seem to have that right now. So can maybe I just spit on her? Not only is that disgusting, but it's also seemingly disrespectful. I saw what you did there. Vaginas have very sensitive pH balances. If you put your spit into your partner's vagina, it can change the pH level. It can probably change the whole timeline or relationship. Please, can we stop talking about this? This is much, man. Ugh. So I have to use her spit, bitch? Or <laughs> I, 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 I need to understand. There's, there's no... There was no lubricant. God damn. All right. So Azuelo, I've learned, doesn't like spending money and also teaches his kids how to brush teeth like he would to someone at a club when he cheats on them. Very good, Azuelo. Who do you rate sex with your partner on a scale of 1 to 10? And if you're willing, tell me why. So now Reba, Dr. Reba is again asking personal questions like she did earlier. Who's circumcised? I'm pretty sure on the break she was like, how big are you? Huh? What? <laughs> Can't be. I need to see it. Now she's like, rate sex with your partner and then tell me why. And she says, you don't have to say anything. Then we'll proceed to ask specific people to rate things. Um, I would say 10. 10? Yeah. What about you, Kalani? Why did he sigh then? <sighs> oh, I guess it's perfect. It's 10 out of 10. Wouldn't change a thing. But I'm only saying that because if I don't say that, this bitch will leave. So realistically, it's a three. My options are I say it's a 10 and I have three out of 10 sex. Or I tell her the truth to say it's a three and I have zero out of 10 sex because she leaves and I don't have sex. So I guess it's a 10. I would feel more comfortable declining. Okay. So, uh, uh... Man, so then she asked uh, the girl, like, yo, what do you feel? And she says, I declined to answer that question. It implies a couple things. One could be that she just is not on the same page and doesn't feel like he gives her that same 10 out of 10 that she is giving him. So that's, oh, when you're not on the same page, your relationship is bad. Really bad. After all, Swallow cheated on me and I did what I did. We haven't been physically intimate. And anytime I think about him having sex, I think about him with other people. Immediately, I'm like, Bleh. Just for context, Azuelo, this dude, he cheated on her at a club. And she's basically saying, man, I just can't get past that. Which is something you need to in a relationship. Like, I otherwise, don't be with the person. If you can't get past it and you're going to hold something against them forever, you might as well not be in that relationship because it's not fair to hold something against someone but still try and keep them. Secondly, I just want to go on record and say, he then gave her a whole pass to kiss someone and she proceeded to bang them fully. Oh. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> but doesn't bring this up at all and goes on to be like, yeah, I feel kind of awkward when he, uh, when he, uh, you know, when he does the sticky icky, because I remember he cheated. So did you. That's bad too. This is very, very bad relation. A very not good relationship. I want to come over here, and I want to get a rating from you guys. Well, right now we're not having sex. Oh God! Look at Big Ed leaning his whole body to try and be in this camera angle. The last time that you were intimate together, how would you rate that? I'd say probably an eight. Ooh. <laughs> 
Damn, I never seen Kelly so happy before. They apparently aren't doing it, but when they used to, it was a whole eight out of 10. He's so happy you can see the whole gap in between his teeth, probably widened because it's smiling. Man, when I sex I was in, we was rappers, we was like, just barbaric battle. That just Please stop. He's lying through his teeth, isn't he? Yes. Please, please stop, sir. Barbarians battling in bed, bitches blowing and boobies everywhere. Bodies hit the floor. Betrayal. <laughs> Lots of things happen. We ain't had no barbaric we rabbit went. set. So, hold on. We weren't going in? That's because I we're fat. I remember licking the sweat off of you. What oh, the fuck was that? God damn. Lick the sweat off. Some things you shouldn't flex, okay? Anyway, Molly was really funny. She's like, we're fat. We're not barbarians. We're just fatties. Damn. I licked the sweat. Because you know. we're both out of breath. It was good. Do you find Molly attractive? Yes. Do you find Kelly attractive? I don't know how I feel. I know this is about Big Ed. No, I feel at this point Kelly's important to talk about because he constantly fights with Big Ed, so maybe there's some context needed every now and again. But yeah, uh, his partner, he's like, yeah, I find her attractive, and she doesn't find him attractive because she thinks he's a deadbeat because he, at the moment, doesn't walk, and he used to have a job, a position of power, and she's like, that used to be attractive to me. Now he just sits there with his uh, tooth gap. Coming off of his career, I feel like he was in a place where he just was really unmotivated, and that's the truth with a lot of things. Does Big Ed ever sit on things normally, or does, like, his body just compress, and by the end of it, he's like, oh, okay. This is comfortable for me. Because when he was sitting in the jacuzzi, he like slanted. Like everything feels like he looked at the Leaning Tower pizza and was like, this is excellence in terms of comfort. I like this. This is good. It's a wonder off the wall to him because he's like, I wonder how comfortable that shit is if I sit up there. I want to get a rating from you guys. So we we, we started out as, a, as an 11 and over time, it's probably about a five. That's really uninspired. Reba asked Big Ed and Liz and Big Ed says we used to be an 11 out of 10. It used to be like the Kings of Leon song, the sex is on fire. But now the sex is, you know, mildly setting off the smoke alarm. <laughs> And even sometimes it doesn't. I'm not someone to just like stop and give you like five or 10 minutes to catch your breath and then like get back into it. I prefer to get myself off. Reba gives Liz carte blanche to just say whatever is on her mind. And she she proceeds to say 10 minute breaks in between is like walking a shift at a drive through. Like, why are you even taking breaks? Because this should be pleasurable. And she's sort of right. And then she ends by saying, I'll do it myself. She just does it herself. She doesn't even trust this man to do the job correctly. Being intimate with Ed right now. For this thing on my mind. If we don't really try to work on our sex life in the bedroom, the relationship's over. What? Did you not just say earlier if we didn't work on our communication, this thing's over? Every time, it's like a different problem and the balance of your relationship lies on this. I think an episode ago, she's like, if we don't work on how we fight, we're never gonna be together. Do you not see these are different problems and each time you're giving the problems ultimatums? There's like a hundred problems and you're like, if we don't fix our solution to you making me laugh every five minutes, this is over. If you don't fix your neck, this is over, okay? Hey, 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 if you don't grow in the next 10 months like a plot, this is over. Just every problem just adds up and now it's the sex life. I feel 1% sorry for Big Ed. If you find a way to share your solo experience. No, I prefer to just do it by myself because he gets out of breath so fast. humbling experience to uh, um, imagine sitting with two enemies in Jovi and Kelly and then you have your partner the person who you rely on most and she proceeds to open their tanks and load it with ammunition so that they can use it anytime they want on Big Ed. That was cold. That, that was colder than the shit in my freezer. <laughs> Yep. I know these two say some borderline gangster shit to each other. I don't know, man. I feel like disclosing those personal intimate issues. Whenever people do that, it's like, it feels like a breach of privacy and then some. Those are like really intimate things and they stay on the internet forever. And it's like, that's a person you love and care about or should. And even if you don't love and care about them, the fact that you're engaged means that once upon a time, you clearly did care about them. And nobody 
that cared about someone should feel the need to hurt them. Revenge is not a dish best served cold. Revenge is a dish that should be thrown away before even actually coming out to the customer because that is not fun. Even though I don't agree with most of what Big Ed says or does, that's too far. That's sad. Even if it's true, that probably should be in the privacy of not television. Got it. Oh, oh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jovi's partner even, I cut this out, but she says, I feel sorry for Big Ed. I do too, man. I don't know. I did, I don't know. It just doesn't feel like, it feels like, ugh. I did just have surgery and I'm trying to get back in the shape. It's been months. It's been a couple weeks. Everyone's being honest. I'm gonna be honest. Damn, I can even see, like I haven't seen him hurt many times. I've seen him be like, mm, this sucks. But this is this is one of those few times where I'm like, ooh, that one went through the armor. That's really a shot. It lo He looks like, wow. I'm kind of helpless, Aww. man. What do you want me to do? And I know, like, you know, get your stamina up, actually go for a run. That dad bod is more like a pregnant mom bod at this point, which is the worst type on a man. But still, oh, I feel like that one should have been kept private. I told you stop being funny and then you just poke the bear a little bit too hard i have homework for you all so then reba is like okay homework for the week you guys all need to improve your dank ass sex lives and here's how you can do it so she starts by giving them assignments i would like for you guys to see what arousal feels like without penetration thank you guys for coming today she ends by saying the cheekiest thing i think a sex professional could say thank you guys for coming today i cannot believe she didn't laugh or have one drummer be like Ta -dum -ta. just come on man this was so good ah oh, reba you need to hire me I'm you being were intentionally honest. trying to embarrass no, me. No, I wasn't. I'm yeah, being... you were. Another example on Ed saying that he's trying. He is not taking this class seriously. Unfortunately, Liz, I can't agree with you. Imagine if Big Ed said you were not good in bed and proceeded to say things that maybe were out of your control or things that you were really sensitive about. Like maybe he said, oh, one of the titties is way bigger than the other. And every time I uh, put my face in it, one smacks me so hard I get knocked out and the other one just tries to recover. You know, like something that you just maybe wouldn't want public information, something that wouldn't go on TV. I feel like there's a line that might have been crossed here. And it's not that he's not trying. He actually did ask a good question. And then you asked the question as to how he could uh, do more. And there's even been like, the teacher gave you guys a uh, assignment to do. What more could he do? If I'm willing to leave my whole life behind to move with him to Arkansas. Then he should be able to fuck me. I leave my family so he can fuck me. Okay? I'm on the clock here, okay? I'm on the clock with the cock. He needs to not take that away from me. He's taking 10 minute breaks, smoke breaks. I don't pay you to do that. I don't pay you at all. I don't pay you in compliments. And in fact, I'm gonna be paying you in insults if you don't come back right now. He better start getting his together. No one else was complaining about their spouse. Shut up. Actually, they, everyone was complaining about their spouse. That's, most of the session was that, but okay. Shut up. So another fight happens, just another amazing fight, but now we have the couch, and the couch usually separates or brings couples together. That is what a couch does. Besides that, it's for people who are high to actually find a place not to hurt themselves. Those are the two things couches are made for. And I guess the third thing is uh, when you say something really stupid to your wife, think it's funny, and that is your only friend for the rest of the night. I did get a lot out of that class. Like I like oh, yeah. was rolling my eyes every time you try to make a joke because you can't be serious. But... I'm just looking for that laugh. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why though? What are you? What are you, comedian? Like I'm, I'm just looking for that laugh. You know, I need that fucking laugh. I don't know. If I don't find a laugh, I'll just go crazy. <laughs> Oh. This is not a comedy stand-up resort. You can be calm. I don't go out in the street and start telling people jokes with my mic. That would be weird. Do it in my home like a weird person should. I need to calm down my comedy because the minute things get serious or if I get nervous, I go funny. And I'm sorry for making jokes. There you go. There's literally, it's a defense mechanism. And that's what I was going to say. And people sometimes laugh to diffuse a situation or to make more light of it. Because if it gets too emotional, they might actually succumb to whatever real emotion masked by comedy. This is, you know, the classic saying, behind the face of the clown is a sad, impotent man. <laughs> So maybe there's some truth behind that. He's telling jokes because he doesn't want to be anxious or show her that he might be afraid. And that's on him to actually work on. So calling him out in a more loving way would probably be a better way to actually 
aid that because it's a lot it's a lot harder when someone doesn't believe in you and also wants you to change if you care maybe you do it in a more loving way and be like okay i can see why you're doing this i'm gonna try and support that but i'll also let you know that you're doing it and and we'll get through that I just don't want you to think i'm taking this lightly i'm serious about us i want it to work i just feel us slipping away i saw the look in her eyes as soon as he said slipping away she's like what Nobody said anything about leaving. I was just kidding! Come on! It's weird. When she holds the power, she's like, one thing, Ed, and I'm leaving. As soon as he's like, I, I think I'm gonna leave, the balance shifts from, I'm leaving, to, why? Why would you leave? What did I do? And Big Ed's actually being more vulnerable than I thought right now. I don't like to take life so serious. Something could happen to you. What's gonna happen, like, if something were to happen to me tomorrow and, like, you knew everything that I needed from you? What? Do you, what? If something happens for you tomorrow, he's gonna get the notebook, find the greatest joke. Cancer? I thought she was a Sagittarius. And then the doctor's like, Sir, dude, she has, like, two months to live. It's like a Walter White situation. And you didn't give it to me. Sexually or, like, sorry. I just... I don't know what she means. That would suck. You can be taken from me tomorrow and... I feel like this is the second time she's done this. Every time she thinks about Big Ed dying, she starts crying and I don't understand. Is this a thought that goes through her head often? She just wakes up, she's like, hey, You could die. You know what? These are tears of joy. <sighs> Okay, just go. I don't want to keep thinking about this I'm ruining my makeup. I never made you feel like I had your back. I definitely know where Liz is coming from. That will also make it easier for Liz to have my back, which is what I really want. And a shocking twist of events, Liz is like, I need to have your back more. It seems like they're having proper discourse. This conversation is definitely long overdue, and so maybe this therapy is actually working. Now we know what the problem is. Oh, now you know. Okay. Because before that was the issue. Just fighting, don't understand what the issue was. I think, Big Ed, I think it's fair to say the issue is that you guys know exactly what your problems are and refuse to change it because old habits die hard. And uh, even though a person is amazing, <clears throat> it is up to the individual whether to see they're worth it. Also, Liz doesn't even want you to not be funny. I've watched your relationship long enough to know she likes the fact that you make stupid dad jokes. It's just the timing of when you do it that sometimes annoys her. And the mood that you guys set the tone in during the day, if you have a fight the night before, she's not gonna be laughing at every joke the next day. I'll be serious when it's time to be serious. And I know you have my back. I just need to feel it. Okay, deal. I'm gonna try not to tear you down. and you're. I'm gonna try to be serious. serious. That sounds like a very good deal. I'm gonna try not to ruin your life, and you try to not be as funny, okay? People could do without the laughter over here, okay? And if you just do that, Mr. Funny Pants, I won't be saying that you have a small penis or cannot actually last in bed, <laughs> okay? I love you. Love you too. As all handshakes end with, hello? Yes, I love you too. <laughs> I'll see you at the party. Bring the butt stuff. All right, give me a high five. Let's go masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Will you massage my prostate? Definitely not. All right, so this conversation ends splendidly. Somehow we have a happy ending with Big Ed wanting her to put uh, her fingers up and between his butt cheeks and spread it like the curtains on a Monday morning, so. Great imagery, guys. Well, that ends the Big Ed saga, but I still wanted to look at the Kelly thing. I think this is an important scene. I know that we're not talking about him much, but I think this is important to talk about. So, we have Kelly going to a therapist, and I added the scene in for one specific reason. You'll find out. After the sex session, we just basically was not connecting. The status between Molly and I, it's not good. What's going on, sir? So you know. There it is. There. This guy. This guy. Okay. I don't like a lot of things in the show, but this man right here, I feel like he is just not even real. Jason Prendergast. He's the worst. He's not real. He's the worst psychologist. Good to cool, see cool. You. Right. Everybody know I have a good heart, and if she's not being receptive to this, I don't need to be dealing with it. Okay, so Kelly comes and he's like, everybody know I got a good heart. That's a really weird thing to say. Most people don't know you or your heart. But then he's like, man, if she's not reciprocating, I don't know what to do. Yet here you are on an island talking to a pseudo psychologist. Ready for some therapy? That's not what a therapist said. That's not what a th Have you ever went into a cargo truck and then the dude loads it up and he's like, ready for some trucking? And then starts driving off. Have you, have you ever went to, I don't know, 
you got a, a hooker from GTA and she got in your car and she's like, ready for the sex? No, ready for some therapy? That's not a thing. What attracted me to him was that he had something going. When I start off the day with him and I say, what are you gonna do today? And when he says to me, nothing, I'm like, okay. Okay, so apparently the problem is he used to be a Brooklyn cop, now he does nothing. And this makes her unattracted to him because he's not ambitious, he's just fat. Yeah. And Dr. Pendergrass hole is going to have to figure this out. He asked the classic question, that a therapist asks when they're probably not trained. How do you feel? You tell me the problem and you work it out and then you pay me. I like this. She's not telling it the whole truth. So what's the whole truth? It frustrates me a lot because I changed my world for her. Sounds like you need to know if she loves you. What are you just pulling the shit out of your ass, bro? He said I changed my whole world for her. And he's like, sounds like you're, sounds like you love her, right? Can we explore how this man changed his whole world? What does that even mean? I changed my world for her. Sounds like you need to know if she loves you. That's not, that's the weirdest like assumption. I changed my whole world for her. Sounds like you need new pairs of socks. No, a water bottle. You need a water bottle. Everyone needs that. And she hasn't validated that at all. Her actions hasn't, hasn't validated that at all. Can you give him that, Molly? Can you give him something to work with right now? If he's just so bad. Can you give him something? Can you get, can you validate him? Obviously not, motherfucker. If she hasn't done it thus far, you saying that is not gonna get her to do it. And even if she does it, you're not going to literally be in their relationship 24 seven. So you need to actually solve the root of the problems rather than the surface level. Can you validate him so I can leave? Can you validate him then my parking so I can get the fuck out of here? You are the actual shittiest psychologist. And to no one's surprise, she says no, by the way. He has no respect for me. Multiple times that I begged for him to come. He hasn't had time to come out of op mode. Why are you shaking your head? Yep, so now there's another issue. He's shaking his head. He's never been able to come out of cock mode. I think she said cop mode, but I don't know. And yet again, if you're watching this, you're probably like, what is the actual issue? All I've heard is that he's changed his world for her and apparently she feels he doesn't respect him as a mother. We don't know how or why. We've not gotten to the root of it, but Mr. Pendergrass over here or whatever his name is at this point is just looking at people longingly like, yes, and what do you say to that? Uh, how will you reply, Molly? And you, Kelly? Hmm, interesting. I feel like he found those glasses on the floor off Venice Beach, put it on his fucking eyeballs, and then took a trip straight to this show. Like, that's how qualified this man is. She's wrong, man. She's wrong. Listen, she brother. is wrong. Listen, brother, it's gonna she be okay. Listen, oh, listen. man, I don't need this. So then Molly makes Kelly cry, which is very sad. You can see this man is in agony and pain. And again, we need to probably get to the root of the issue, probably try and fix why this is happening. But does any of this get done in the hands of the great psychologist, Dr. Jason P? I went against all my beliefs for her. I changed everything for her. I don't wanna be with a person like that. No, no, she did me wrong, man. All right, so we have issues. In one side, she feels unrespected. She feels sexually unattracted to a man who she feels is not motivated. He feels like she cheated her, that he gives a lot and gets nothing in return. We have these two major issues they need to delve into one at a time where both of them can communicate, talk to each other, say, this hurts. Can I fix this? Can I not? We need to see if this is applicable. Can we work this shit out? We're here for a reason. We must feel some hope. Otherwise, we wouldn't be on last resort. But maybe we do because of the money. And they put this, this relationship that is crumbling into the hands of a man who probably can't spell his own name. I feel sorry for them. But this is what he has to say. Molly, his love for you is making him cry right now. You are so stupid that I'm going to take those glasses and throw it into another country. You dirty, dirty man. He absolutely isn't crying because of his love for you. He's crying because he fucking hurt at a situation. He's crying because he feels vulnerable, scared. He feels like nothing he's doing is being recognized. He's not crying because he loves her so much. He's crying because maybe it isn't reciprocated and it hurts. It hurts that he's putting in effort and not receiving it back. Oh my God, dude. Are you gonna literally manipulate her into trying to say something nice to him? Look at him. His love is making him cry. And you're being a bitch by not loving him. 
So just fucking love him. That is literally, that's probably the worst gaslight some psychology shit I've ever heard. Just because someone cries, it doesn't mean you have to change your ways. And just because someone cries, it doesn't mean they're doing it out of love. And some, it's just, oh, this man blows my mind. I get it, but I just don't think that it, it, I don't know. He never even tried to understand what happened. And they have a lot of communication issues. You are the boy, I'm gonna, I wanna fire you. After all this shit, he's like, mm, these two? Communication issues. I don't know how they're gonna fix it. Not talking about the problems to me sounds like avoidance. Not eating the food sounds to me like hunger. Not sleeping in bed at night sounds like tired. Not breathing long enough sounds like dead, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sherlock Holmes. Thank you, as usual. What a great discovery you've made. You've added absolute nothing to this. And not only that, Kelly feels so bad, he decides to leave. When you, as a therapist, have people sit down and can't even finish their communication, and they come to you just so that they can do that, I feel like you haven't even done your job well. If you serve someone food and they leave the restaurant halfway, I feel like at some point it's like, bro, I, damn, maybe I shouldn't have made shitty food. Come on, man. In this moment, I don't feel like he can take care of me. Not emotionally, not financially, not physically, not sexually, not mentally. Oh, Molly. He can't take care of me physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, sexually, um, uh, high, highly, he can't even take me to the dry cleaners. He can't even turn on the channel I like. We don't like the same Netflix movies. He don't like the same artists I like. His music tastes up. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly, I can't, Kelly, I can't, Kelly, I can't, I can't, I can't deal with a lot. Kelly, 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 I'm fired. I'm fired. I can't do shit. Liar. I can't. And I'm, I'm done. Molly, his love for you made him walk away. Do you feel bad yet? This is this is the psychologist, so. And that ends the episode. I'm sorry, I had to have the scene in because anytime Dr. Pendergrass is in, I'm going to roast him now. But this is next time on the show. Big Ed gets hypnotized because not only is this 90 Day the Last Resort, we need people to sexually educate you. At this point, it's 90 Day Last Resort. When we say Last Resort, we are literally trying anything under the sun to get your shitty relationship to work. They're, they're gonna try and hypnotize him into loving Liz. That's fun. I'm going to hypnotize you, and then I'm going to instruct your soul to take you back to a lifetime that you had. You know, I just wanna say, if this shit really worked, and you could hypnotize someone into loving someone, or, you know, hypnotize yourself into all your problems disappearing, can we do this more often? Because it should be a form of like medicine at this point, if you could do it. But uh, yeah, here go Big Ed, getting hypnotized into loving. I really have no idea what I'm getting myself into. Neither do I. Tell me what you see. I'm gonna tell you what I see. Whenever he lays down like that, I mean, if Liz is looking at that saying, I, I love this, this is love. I don't wanna be mean, but that is a road right there. That's, there's no bumps, there's no speed bump where the neck should be. A leprechaun costume and I'm alive, but I'm buried. And that is all we have to go off. So next episode, he's gonna be hypnotized in a leprechaun costume, but buried. That randomness is about how I feel about this show. I feel like the, the people who come on, the solutions are all randomized. The fact there's no host, no prize, no anything besides alcohol and a bunch of old people trying to do anything they can to pass time by. I feel like this is exactly what I'm talking about. But hey, this is another episode of the show. Thank you for watching. I hope you join me on the next episode. Let's see what we got uh, with this hypnosis thing. And I hope you're enjoying the series. Please tell me if you like it. I've been having a couple copyright issues as usual. Big Ed and TLC love to give me the business, but I hope that uh, I could do some more of these for you because I am unfortunately hate to admit that I'm enjoying it, but I am enjoying talking about it. Thank you so much. Take care. I'll see you.